you guys. Um, thanks for coming to my talk. And my name is Naomi, as you probably know. And I'm from Five and Eight. And for my PYP project, I chose Fukushima radiation as a topic because I really wanted to help my family and the children of Fukushima because they're affected really badly. So I just really wanted to help them. And also, awareness is quite important if you're trying to make a change. So that's why I invited Mr. Seaman. So. graduated from the famous ETH, you might know, in Zurich. And also, as you might know, that Albert Einstein studied there too. And he also spends a lot of his time going to schools in Germany and Switzerland and a few other places to raise awareness about sustainable energy and also renewable. And before I let Mr. Lima take over, uh, I just want to say a few things how this is kind of going to work. So, Okay, thank you very much, Naomi. Uh, welcome. I invite you to ask questions at any time. Raise your hand like this, and I will finish what I'm about to say, and you can ask a question. Um, I'm coming here as an activist. And maybe some of you are activists too. So we are like, maybe if you want, working on the same subject, on the subject of energy crisis, on the subject of nuclear energy. Who has heard of nuclear energy before? <coughs> Who has heard of nuclear energy before that Fukushima accident? Who thinks, who, who does know that there's nuclear energy in Switzerland too? So who, who did not know just up to now that we have nuclear power plant in Switzerland? Okay. Um, who thinks we should turn off all nuclear power plants? Who thinks we should let them run? Very good. Um, then I want to start. I want to tell you a little bit what a nuclear power plant is what happened in Japan and Fukushima, and what alternatives there are. Is that okay for you? Yes. yes. Yeah. Good. So we will start by uh, saying what a nuclear power plant actually is. And I will tell you right now, after this hour, <coughs> there are many things that you will know better than most adults out there, because many people don't really spend time on the basics. They don't, some, some things they don't know. So what a nuclear power plant actually is, it's a place where water boils. So we have some kind of heat that's supposed to be a flame that boils water. Yes? And Maybe you know this. It's like a pot you put on the, in the kitchen. When you boil water, out of there comes... Steam. Steam, exactly. Now the steam is able to make a turbine turn around. And you have a closed, a closed thing, and steam is going to start to boil in there. The steam wants to get out. And this coming out steam is going to turn a turbine, which is generating electricity. You can imagine that? Yeah. It's like when the, the bicycle, you have a little uh, dynamo in front of the front wheel, which is tur turning also, making light for the, for the light of the bicycle. Yeah. So you have this water power plant where water goes through and it makes turn around the generator, and the generator generates electricity. So this is where the electricity is made in the power plant. Now this steam is still kind of steam when it comes out of that device. 
and then it has to be cooled down <coughs> to enter the thing again. And this cooling place is where the water is cooled normally with some other water. And this is what we usually see as a power nuclear power plant. Looks like this. It's a great tower. And in that great tower the steam goes in, it's sprayed water on so the, the, the water is chilling and then the steam cools down to become water again and this water goes in there again. So this is very the base, really the basic of the nuclear power. Questions? Yes? And why is that bad? There is nothing bad about that yet. I think. Yes? Right, good question. So there's some water circulating in here, and some water comes out of here, right? And also, this water is not dangerous. It is water that is sprayed on here, it comes from a lake, that's why nuclear power plants are always uh, comes from a lake or a river or from the from the tap. They are very often close by to water. That's why Fukushima Daiichi was at the sea, because you need this water to be sprayed on just for cooling purpose. And that's going to be um, in the atmosphere after. But that's not dangerous. Yes? How much water would they need in the thing where they How much water do they have in the water where they need in the thing that they heat up? Yeah, the whole power plant would be less water, I guess, than this room built. But I'm not sure about the amount exactly. Um, let's go on. The dangerous part is in here, because they don't need a flame. They don't use a flame. They use this nuclear thing, which they like to draw in this shape. Who has seen that sign before? Okay. So that was something around when Einstein was studying. They found out they, that they could work on, on, on physics when they imagined material, everything, us being made up like this. There's a nucleus called an atom. And this atom you can crack. When it crack it, there's only one, there's one species of atoms. There's a special species you can crack. When you crack that, it generates heat. And that's where they fire, where, what they fuel all the, the thing with. Actually, they do it with long rods. The long rods are made out of pills, out of uranium. And this re special uranium is a long rods filled with pills. And this, this reactor part is just like this, I mean, like this size. This size, just this size. So big it is. It is filled with rods, with, with tubes, with tubes, and the tubes are all filled with pills, and these pills, there's the uranium in it, they can crack and they can make lots of heat with it. And then comes all the nuclear power plant cycle that generates electricity. Now, the problem about nuclear energy is what I'm going to tell you now, what about the problem about this is. Is your question about that? About this part? Uh, yeah. So I'm going to go on with this, or up the question up to now? Yeah. Right. So the problem about nuclear energy is actually that there are so many problems. People who are in favor of nuclear energy will still tell you it is cheap, and they don't, there's no electric, there's no CO2 coming out of it, which is harming our climate. We have heard about that. So. Yeah. And this before, this is our CO2 concentration on the planet over many, many, many hundred thousand years. And this is a problem too. It's a different problem. And some people would say, look, energy doesn't have any CO2. So that's why it's good and it's cheap. So that's why it's good. And they have two reasons. And they put you two reasons in front of many said, yeah, but. Yeah, who has, who has, uh, has said, who has live this situation already. And you say, yeah, but. And in that situation, 
I want to give you an, a cool trick. <coughs> the cool trick is that you use your hand to remember some problems of nuclear energy. When I was in ETH in university and the teacher told me, he asked the class, what's the problem with nuclear energy? I was like, oh, oh. there's many problems. Um, um, and then the teacher went on. He said, okay, so there's no problem with nuclear energy. And actually, in ETH, most, most of the teachers are very in favor of nuclear energy. So I started to uh, use my hand to have these points, and I want to show them to you now. The thump is the first problem of nuclear energy. It says the thump is different than all other fingers, and the problem is that nuclear energy harms our cells, it harms our DNA, it destroys our DNA in our body, because this radiation makes the heat is very dangerous. It's more dangerous than toxins, it's more dangerous than uh, a knife, it, because it lives long, it, is, it destroys your cells, and it's very dangerous. Now that's the thumb. The index finger, what does the index finger do? It does point somewhere, right? And this reminds me that one problem is very far away. I will drop my hand here, and I will put DNA here. Maybe you have seen this already, it's a sign for DNA. So that is an indication that it's very dangerous. Now, the index finger points to the place somewhere else where the uranium is put out of the ground. And there, this radiation is already there, it's in the ground, and you dig it up, and people who work there will suffer, people who live there will suffer, people who live there later on will suffer from the radiation. And that's something we don't pay for when we use electricity, we don't pay, um, we can't any, do anything about it. And these people can protect themselves. Normally they will not do that very well, but the people who are living there later on, they will not be able to Now this finger, you know this finger, right? <laughs> you know this finger, yes. what does it mean? Yes? It means a rude word you. Yes. yes, and that's actually what, what uh, our history, what happened a lot in our history, that Countries would say a word, you, to another country, right? Or maybe terrorists would say to a country, this. So it reminds me that you can use nuclear energy to make a bomb. <coughs> oh, I, I, was, I was driving that nice last Yeah? So, you have seen that picture already? You can use a bomb. So, bombs, nuclear bombs, are a great threat to all our world, and you will remember that with this finger. Right? Just repeat what was the thumb, what was the index finger, what was the middle finger. Now we go through a ring finger. The ring finger for me is just a brain trick. Yes? We, we use this trick to remember. The ring finger remembers me of the wedding ring. The wedding ring is a symbol of it lasts forever. The wedding, it lasts forever, right? It's just <coughs> to remember. So the wedding ring, we'll make a ring here so you can remember that. It will last for almost forever. It's a sign, it's a mathematical sign, which signs infinity. Yes, infinity time. So the, the products that stay here when we crack down I was draw a half of a, of a nucleus there. We we'll break it. These products, they live very long and they have strong radiation, which is harmful. So we have this problem also with um, the 
the re residues of nuclear <coughs> nuclear waste. That was the the nuclear waste. You have heard about that problem already? Yes. Yeah. So we don't know where to place it. There is no safe place on Earth that will be safe forever. Yes. Yes, if we put it in space, then we will use more energy, or a lot of energy, maybe more energy, a lot more energy maybe, to put it up there than we actually gain from it. So, I would be okay with putting it in space somehow. Well, if the rocket breaks, then it looks like this, yes? No, I don't want that. That would be really dangerous, but, but just for the energy part, I would say it doesn't make sense. Because we, you take so much energy to, to put it up there. <coughs> now the little finger, I will show it with this. It's kind of a mathematical thing. It's like a curve in statistics you see there. And the majority of the good uranium, which is this one, is already used. There's not much uranium left of that kind that we do use in nuclear power plants. We have already used it up. So there's a lot left, but it is, it is very, it's not that good quality. We need to, to dig more and more and more and more mountains and put more and more and more um, mountains, to make them small to take it out. Now I want you to explain your neighbor the five points right now, and then switch and explain it again. If you have both 30 seconds. <laughs> Maybe one of them is not so much a problem than CO2, but all of them I have no solution for it. So, um, now, I told you we are using electricity, nuclear electricity, in Switzerland as well. And actually it's like this, we have all the electricity we use. This was all the electricity we use. Yes, um, the majority is hydropower, water. It's sixty percent. It's a little more than the half. And then there's forty percent. Nuclear power. And I want you to ask. What else can we do to, instead of this? Yes? Use more renewable energy. Yes. What is there as your energy in back? Um, solar. Solar, right. Yes. Wind. Wind, yes. Water. Yes. More water, yes. Hydroelectric. Yes, that's, that's, that's this one. We already <coughs> use it a lot, but we could use it more, yes. Geothermal. Geothermal. Right. Yes? And there's something called like solar island. Like there's like yeah, a solar island. island. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Who, who knows that concept, solar islands? Who has heard of it? Oh, many, many. Yes? Ah, sorry, that was, yeah. And um, more renewable energies? Yeah? Um, bio. 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 Bio.
Okay. So you know a lot, really, yes? Hydro power? Tidal, tidal power, yes, yes. Who has not heard of that already? You really know a lot, yes? Ah, oh, okay. Yes, good. Um, I, I know this is not a renewable energy, but when they use fire instead of the iron, they broke down. Yes, actually, you heard of. Um, the, the most the most common energy in the whole world is coal, right? And the coal power plant works exactly the same way, just they use coal here. And they, they don't make nuclear waste, they make CO2 a lot. And they have climate change as a problem. And I want to stop all coal power plants as well and replace them with, with renewable energy that we are talking about. <laughs> Right, yes? Um, uh, other thing you could do is um, you could go to a really unknown place mm -hmm. and then use a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of um, of the nuclear power there mm -hmm. and then it runs out and then you just... Yeah, put it somewhere not in my backyard. <laughs> right, very good concept. But you have to transport. The electricity from somewhere not in my backyard to <coughs> your kitchen where you put all the stuff. So, right? And therefore you need an electricity grid. And that's expensive too. So that's why the power plants are in Switzerland. Otherwise, the Swiss people wouldn't have built them in their own country. They would have built them somewhere else. Yes? Um, your badge on your jacket says we are um, the 99%. Is that part of that? No. Yes? Yes, that's done. Actually, Switzerland is kind of world leading techno in technology to uh, burn garbage and make ele electricity and clean the air which has burned the garbage very well. Um, in Switzerland, really almost all of the normal waste is, is, is uh, taken care of like that. But we don't want to have more and more and more and more waste, right? So in our electricity, there's really, there's really a little bit of garbage. Actually, in the renewable section, garbage is the biggest part in Switzerland. I didn't mention the renewable section. Of course, there's the renewable section here. We don't have that much already. Yes? Um, there's electric wheels. Hmm? Look at these electric wheels. Electric? Wheels. <laughs> Pills. 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 Uh, actually, you can. I want. Yes, I, I. I think that's a good question to go on. Yes, I will. I will step another um, subject further. If you burn nuclear waste, what happens? Actually, burning nuclear waste means that one of these things will go together with air. Because burning actually means do something together with air. This is air. Yeah, and if something goes together with air, like wood, wood is also made out of <coughs> atoms, and when they crack out, and they put themselves together with air, and then they go out, as oxygen, oxygen, then that means burning, right? And when that happens, the only place when that happens is when the nuclear power plant is actually burning, right? The nuclear power plant is actually burning, and that was really the biggest, 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 biggest fear in Fukushima, that the reactor number four, one of them, those reactors, would start burning. And if that happens, then the most dangerous particles, the very most dangerous particles, would be carried out with the air, and that would mean that for hundreds of thousands of years, all the region around Fukushima would not be possible to live in. And what we have now is only some particles that were in this water, they have gotten out. And they only live like 
a lifetime of a human. They live only, only 10, 20, 20 years, 4 years. I, I, I don't know all the numbers of my heart. But in in um, Chernobyl, in, uh, in, uh, where the last accident was, or one of the last big accidents were, it was 26 years ago, there big regions are kind of, kind of somehow livable again. Not the center, but big regions are again livable. So, um, when nuclear waste burns, or when nuclear power plant burns, then the air is going to take the very most dangerous particles out, like if there was a bomb, for example. So if you use nuclear bomb, then you will also have the most dangerous particles in the air. Yes? Actually, this burning, burning um, uranium does never happen. Actually, if you ask a technician, they will say it never happens. So unlikely, it never happens. And when it happens anyway, it's very dangerous and it's only happened so far um, in uh, places like Nagasaki, where the Americans stopped a bomb on, on Japan in the Second World War. And, uh, and uh, in Chernobyl, not so much, but also, yes. Um, <coughs> I heard about this thing with like ABC things, something to do with moving their power, and like they don't want it. Um, and it's like I don't know that. Ah, yes, ABC, so atomic, biological, and chemical weaponry. So that's just the most evil thing you can have as a military. Yes? What would happen if all the different um, parts of in the in the thing that they used to burn nuclear energy. What would happen if they all went out into like from, from Fukushima and they all went out into the area? What would happen? Then um, all the people who are living there mm -hmm. would have to move somewhere else to die. That's the very 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 worst worst case. Okay. It's not. It is. It's very 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 bad situation in Fukushima. The most, the very big region around there, children will not be able to play outside. They are living in their homes, they are not, don't go outside. The playgrounds are contaminated, they cannot play there unless they will be way more likely to get cancer. And uh, agricultural products in the region are not eatable, they have to burn them or put them back into the ground. And actually this is going to last 10, 20, 30 years and then people will start to use that area again like more like before. And if the accident had been a lot bigger, then the time would be for, like, forever. Like hundreds of thousands of years. Yes? Aren't there some creatures that will survive natural uh, nuclear disasters? Yes. Or no. Um, actually, no creature can survive it, but creatures who uh, populate very quickly are more likely to be able to live there. So, um, what's kakalakan in English? So, you know that word. Those are one of the species that can cope with it better than others, but also they are destroyed if they get a hit from radiation. Yes. Um, there was actually this TV show, and um, they were using insects and spraying on um, this radiation of nuclear waste. And um, cockroaches actually didn't survive. And there was this other bug, some like, um, like they were testing like fruit flies and cockroaches and all this stuff. And it wasn't actually the cockroach; it was like this blue bug, and it's it's like lays eggs on flowers, and for some reason that. Like, if you, like, let's say, drop a bomb on this flower, it will still be alive after it because of these bugs. I'm not sure. No, not at all. This radiation kills everything if it's strong enough. And uh, there are some animals who can cope with a little more radiation than others. So you can make a test and some uh, of these insects will survive, the others not. But actually all, all life, also the plant, will will suffer from the radiation. If the radiation is strong enough, it will be destroyed. Yes? 
the nuclear power plants, there are these tubes filled with little pills out of uranium that you take out of the ground. And these areas where you take out of the ground are devastating deserts after. And this uranium is not really burned, it's not burned. It is cracked, the atoms are cracked in part in the power plant. And after they are half, half the size, these little uranium atoms. And by cracking these atoms, you generate the heat that normally fuels the nuclear power plant. Yes? What diseases come from, like, a big um, meltdown, like, happening in Chernobyl? Yes, mainly cancer. I was in, I think it was uh, 97, I was in a children's camp close by to Kiev, where children in your age were playing, um, and they, they were taken away from too close by to Chernobyl. And I looked at them, and they were normal. They looked normal, but I knew that many of them would get cancer, and their life would die from cancer, or would have blood cancer, and some of them had. And, and just the risk, the probability, and the, the number of children that would suffer and die from, from such cancer problems is a lot higher in a place where radiation is spread. Yes? Um, you know how you were talking about earlier you need uh, water to put into to boil? Um, doesn't it use up energy to get the water from like the sea or the lake? Yes, if you're talking about something important, it doesn't need energy to, to, to get water. In many places of the world, it's even a lot of energy. But these nuclear power plants are built directly at the sea, directly at the lake, directly at the river, where the, the water is just there. And this water, which is in circulation, it's not used up, it's always there. And this water, which is used to, to cool down, um, it doesn't have to be extremely clean. You can use like normal river water. Yes? Um, this is just a question I've always wondered. We see in hospitals that there's this radiation therapy and are there cases where it is okay to use this form of energy? Like with our x-rays and all of that, you know, we put on lens, and pregnant, whatever, to take pictures um, of our you, you heard this radiation is very strong. So that's why it can move through our body. <coughs> like, when I look through that window, I can see through it. That's, why, that's because the light that comes from the sun, which goes to that graffiti, and which goes to my eyes, goes actually through the window. And for this radiation, our body is like a window can go through. Only just in our in our bones, some of it will, will stuck. It's not completely transparent. So this is a, a, a reason why this form of, of radiation is used in hospitals. When you break your bone, they can make a picture and they can see that and it's very efficient way for doctors to see what actually happened in your body. So it is a very good way to help you stay in good health and but there's also um, there's also uh, nuclear waste produced and it's not exactly it's not high radioactive waste it's just middle radioactive waste but it's the same problem in that there's no solution to it and yes, yes. Um, is there a like Waste, like, or can we create it like again? Like, let's say the world has a certain amount of oil, and eventually we use it a lot. Can we like create it? Um, difficult question. <laughs> the normal uranium we cannot create, but there are other types of reactors that don't really exist yet. But EGH says we are going to invent them that will function with plutonium, for example, or with other radioactive atoms. 
and some of them we can maybe in the future, in the far, far future, create somehow out of the normal uranium. There's two sorts of uranium. One is a little heavier than the other. It's, it's U... This one and this one. And the numbers they put there is about the, the weight of this atom. And actually the lighter one, this, this one, is actually the one that you can crack. This one you cannot crack. And when the scientists would find a way to crack this one, then they could go on forever. And this argument that there is not so much left, this argument wouldn't fit anymore. But the others would still be there. OK? <coughs> and you're pregnant, um, could the radiation get into the um, child's body inside of you? Mm -hmm. um, and that would radiate their body on um, you? Or does it only happen to the person? It doesn't happen. When, when you're pregnant, body. yes, yes. Well, the, the radiation goes through everything. The radiation goes into the child's body directly and can harm the body too. But the most dangerous thing it's not the radiation once, but it's the radiation of little, little particles that you swallow or you breathe in, and they are in your lungs, in your blood, in your, in your body. That's the most dangerous thing. So that's why children are not allowed to play the playground, because there is the dust, there's these particles. You can take them up somehow with a meal, with their with 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 breathing, and so that's in your body then. And I think... Um, right after birth, the danger is there. I, I'm, I'm not so exactly sure if, the, if the, these particles can cross with the baby which is, which is in your stomach when you're pregnant. Yes? Um, can nuclear waste be reused? Um, there is a technique. It has been used in France. <coughs> it's called fast breeder, where they breed new material, which is another material, out of the old material, and it's even more dangerous, even more dangerous than non nuclear weapons. That's why they did not build a lot, of, a lot more of these cars. They, they are not. Some of them want to build more, but they have other problems. They have other, even more dangerous problems. They have, for example, some um, gases that go off to the atmosphere all the time, which are really. And, and they put some of their radiation, radiation right into the Atlantic Ocean all the time. And, and um, there's another thing which, like for example, the nuclear industry in Switzerland says, we used recycled uranium from <coughs> Mayak, which is in Russia somewhere, I don't know exactly where. And when they say they re recycle the uranium, then what they mean is they take this tube, here, they take it out, it's a big tube filled with pills, actually it's this size, they take out the pills, they melt it up, and then there's a few percentage, a little, 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 little of uranium still in there. And they take that out and make a new pill. But that means just they take out of the, of, of the waste, they take a little, little, little to produce new ones. And that is not... It is not recycled. Yes? If you would go into all the garbage bags in Zurich and find two watches or a mobile phone that works in 1,000 bags of garbage, you wouldn't call that recycling the garbage. You would call it recycling the mobile phone. You would not call it recycling the garbage, right? That's what they tell us, and that's wrong. Yes? Okay, so nearly. Um brought us, uh, made us aware of what happened in Fukushima and not wanting that to repeat um, again because it's a very sad story. Now, are there countries in the world that are shutting down their reactors? Are there countries in the world who are, that are building reactors? What can we, as members of society today, how can we make a difference when it comes to this? Good question, because also we're running out of time and yeah. I think we'll find, find a good end there. Actually, when you ask professors at ETH, they will tell you you cannot shut down the nuclear power plants in Switzerland. It's not possible. You got that? Now, in Japan, 
I will not take questions at the front anymore. In Japan, there were 54 reactors in service at the moment where the earthquake happened, when this wave came, when they broke down these um, reactors. <coughs> After that, in one year time, they have shut down all of them. So somehow what the experts say is wrong. It does work. And we, we can work on it. And actually, what I want to tell you is, if we have... Fifteen meters squared of nuclear, uh, nuclear of photovoltaic, photovoltaic. Tanks. How much is that? It's like this area, like this this area. Fifteen meters squared is three by five meters per person, per person. Yes. And one windmill, one really big windmill. Per community. Like we make 2,000 in all Switzerland, and we have 2,000 communities like villages or cities. And if we put one, not in, in every one, but as many as. So one for every community, <coughs> one big windmill. Then we could replace our nuclear power in Switzerland with that. They they don't want to do it because it's a little more expensive, but in the long term it's better for all of us. It's in the long term it's gonna be even cheaper than nuclear power. And in nuclear power we don't really pay. We don't really pay for all this. We don't really pay for the people who get sick, we don't really pay for the people who get sick from, from digging up the ground, we don't pay for the people who have suffered from the bombs and all that. That's why it's so cheap. In the long run, these things are better. Yes? I have three things. Um, does when when radiation travels along like for a long time, does it get weaker, or does it just stay? Like, the radiation stops where it stops. So some the particles will hit something and they will stop. So it get, does get weak. And um, I heard the, I'm not sure about this, but I heard on the news that. Um, in some countries in Europe, that they were going to shut down all the nuclear power plants yes. in, in like in about 10, 20 years time. Yes. That's the discussion in all Europe now, also in Switzerland. We can um, still go for another 10 minutes. Another? We can still go for another 10 minutes. Another 10 minutes, great, yeah. great, great. So the discussion <coughs> is. Um, are we going to shut down all nuclear power plants or not? And if we're going to shut them down, how long does it take? Now, the owner of the nuclear power plants, they want them to be in service as long as possible. In Switzerland or in, the, yeah, in, in Europe, a normal, normal size nuclear power plant is generating one million Swiss francs a day. And that's lots of money, and that's really a lot more than all the anti-nuclear organizations have. So they have lots of money to make publicity for nuclear power, to uh, put up arguments. And that's why the discussion about, shall we put, shut them down now, or later, or in 20 years, or 50 years, is very much um, influenced by this, this money that is generated. I would say we can shut them down today, or in one month, and we will import some electricity. We have extremely good connections in Switzerland to all other countries around. We can import for a few years some of their electricity, and then we had really an incentive to go for, new, for renewable in Switzerland. We don't have that now. There's not that much built now. We have not many people building renewable. Now, your question was a long time ago. Right. No, yes, yeah. Um, how long can a, like, a particle travel? Like, how, how long can radiation travel? Like, would it be able to travel all the way from Fukushima to like, a different country in the world? Or? Yes. Um, there's this world map. On the world map, you can see the radiation from Fukushima 
going all across the what's it called the Pacific? No. Pacific. 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 Hawaii is Pacific. Pacific. No, the Atlantic between Europe and America, but between America and, and Pacific. 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 Right. Okay. So it, it goes all across the Pacific and reaches the United States of America. So you can measure it. The question is how strong is the radiation there? And it's really particles in the water that travel that far and they, they radiate all the time this radiation. So it's it's the radiation that you measure from particles inside the water. Yes? Uh, but like as you said, solar panels, there's also disadvantage because they're very expensive and it takes more energy to build them than they produce. So that's also a big disadvantage. So why would why would people want to have solar panels if it doesn't if it like doesn't it's not I know uh, it doesn't really count off, it doesn't pay off. So yes. Yeah, it's not worth it. Uh, there's, I said this is generating one million Swiss francs per day. And that's where this <coughs> thing is made, that's what this thing is made with that you just said. This is wrong. It was like that many years ago that um, this power plant, this, that is things which need more energy to be produced than they produce actually when they when they are in service. It is not right today, it is wrong today, but many years ago it was correct, and they used this lots of money to tell us it is wrong, it doesn't work, it doesn't function, because they want to have their profit more, more long, long time. So this one that you just said, it uses more energy to be produced than it actually produces when it's in service. It's an argument which is wrong today, that was correct a long time ago. The other one is, it is expensive. Yes, it's expensive. And actually, when you look at the prices for photovoltaic, they go like this. All the time, they go down, 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 down. And as an engineer, I'm absolutely sure it will be in your lifetime very soon, maybe in five years, ten years, it depends, that new photovoltaic plants are cheaper than new nuclear plants. In the desert regions in USA, that has already been happening. In the southern regions of Europe, that has already been happening. That new photovoltaic plants are cheaper, are generating cheaper electricity than new, new nuclear power plants. So, photovoltaic power is Actually, over the lifetime, a lot cheaper than. But like here in Switzerland, like my neighbor, he has three solar panels. Yes. Um, uh, on his roof and uh, on his own, he pays them on his own, and I think like a factory that has way more money than this one person could pay more. Could could pay at least like twenty of those. We have this cool community trick, which Germany has made first and, and has put up ex extensively. They said everybody, everybody can build solar power plants, and as a community, as a, as a nation, as a, as a country, we're going to pay them. And that is a good way, so everybody who has a roof can build a solar power plant. And the money that he has paid more than the no normal electricity is going to be paid by the country. That is, uh, in Switzerland, it's called Einspeisevergütung, Kostendeckende Einspeisevergütung. In Germany, they have it as well. And in Switzerland, we have we have the, the mechanism, the rule, but we don't really use it because we have we have said, okay, we just want this little, we just want this little electricity. There's, there are people saying that we would switch this rule to be okay for more, then within one year we would replace one nuclear power plant in Switzerland. There are thousands of people waiting for the okay go to build their own photovoltaic plant. It's a political problem. We have to convince the people that it's good for us, good for you, good for the Swiss people to have photovoltaic power plants because they are future able. Yes?
Um, I think this, this is a project in Spain that they're gonna, I'm not sure if they have already done it, but they're gonna build like solar panels all around this area, which is the perimeter of 20, or the area of 21 football pitches. And yes, it's called Undersol, the project. It's one of them, there are many of like them. And actually, it's, it's, it's a technique I'm not sure uh, you know of concentrating solar power. It is working, working like this. You have long <coughs> half tubes, like this. There's a tube, and then there's a mirror, and the solar energy comes directly into the mirror and goes onto the tube, like this. And then this tube generates steam, and the steam goes into the power plant. And so they make like a normal power plant, but they use the sunbeams directly to fuel the steam cycle. It's called a steam cycle. Okay, yes? two last questions. Two questions, somebody who has not asked a question at all during this session. There is one who has not asked a question. All right. um, how much money would it take to build a nuclear power plant? Yes, it's in the billions of Swiss francs. It's around, if you open up the producer's page, they say like four billion. When you look in, in uh, Norway, the, the one they have built now, or they are building, it was in the end something like 12 billion. So that's around the cost size of one plant. Um, how do they separate the atoms in the reactor? Um, it is a kind of a very, 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 very strong particle that goes into there and cracks it. And by cracking it, it re rejects three more or two or three more of those extremely fast and strong particles that can crack another one. So that's called a chain reaction. And actually, that is the reason why when you cut off here and here, when the cooling system doesn't work anymore, then this heat will heat up itself so much it will explode. And actually that is the, that is the mechanism that the worst accidents really happen with. That's the, the, the dangerous part. You always have to be sure the cooling does work. Now I think this is the last question and I think you have not asked one yet or not so many. Yes? No, it was the second one. But the, no. Noah. Noah. Make it quick. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Okay. You have not asked for it. Uh, I don't have a question. Okay. I think that's okay, yeah. The person has so, it. That's it. So no. I thank you very much. Thank you all.